Should you get a PhD? The answer is no, but there is an asterisk. The only reason you should definitely get a PhD is if you wanna become a professor. And you better know what it means to become a professor, which I will explain in this video. I was inspired by Mithuna over at Looking Glass Universe where she did a video on whether you should get a PhD or not. And I wanted to contribute my thoughts on getting a PhD in economics. I'm gonna go through a lot of these questions about why you should be cautious about going out and get a PhD, about what you can expect, and then also some advice if you are really interested in going on and getting that PhD in economics. So why do I say no? I mean, I. Have have a PhD? Am I trying to suppress the supply of PhD economists so that way my pay goes up? The reason why I say don't get a PhD is because I want you to think really seriously before you make this big decision. Because if you're the type of person who can go on and get a PhD in economics, that means you're probably someone who has a lot of talent, a lot of skill, a lot of marketable skills, which means going to get a PhD is probably a really high opportunity cost for you. That's five, six years nowadays where you could be in the market gaining a lot of very similar skills and getting paid through all of that. And instead you might be going off and getting a PhD and might not be even that excited about the options that are available for you. I think a lot of people look at the PhD as this is just like getting a little bit more education. This is great. I love school. But PhDs are really not oriented that way. They are heavy investments based really, they're really focused on going on and becoming a professor. So if you are not 100% sure that you wanna become a professor, you probably really wanna reflect on whether you go to a PhD and what you could be doing instead. Suppose you want to become a professor. By the way, I told you I will explain what that even means. Let's just ask ourselves, can you even become a professor? This reminds me of when I finished up graduate school. It's my last year. I'm talking to another PhD student. She is finishing up her PhD in a humanities topic. And I asked her how the job market was looking. She said, oh, it looks great. There's a really good chance that I'm gonna get a good job this year. There are four job postings this year. Four job postings. Now this is four in her specific field because hers was a field that is really, really specific about who they hire. But I was applying to over 100 jobs that year. So to think that four jobs was a good year just baffled me. If you're interested in seeing how many jobs are available for PhD economists and what kind of jobs those are, you can go to Job Openings for Economists. It's called Joe. And that's where you'll find a listing of jobs for PhD economists specifically. A few non-PhD jobs slip in there, but that is where you'll look, especially for the faculty jobs, whether schools are hiring. And there's really good news. I won't use the stats from this year just because this year's a crazy year with the pandemic and hiring. Let's go to the previous year when the pandemic hadn't even hit. What do the job statistics look like? In the 2019-2020 job market, there were 575 openings for full-time professors in U.S. universities. If you're interested in a job outside of the United States, there were 382 full-time academic jobs available for PhD economists. That's 957 economics professor's jobs. Those are tenure track, if that's something that you understand or care about right now. This is not the adjunct low tier jobs. This is for people who want full-time tenure track or tenured academic jobs. That is a lot of jobs available and they're usually pretty flexible on which type of economist they're hiring. So if you want to become a professor, economics is a really good field to be in because there are lots of job openings every year for economics professors. By the way, if you do become a professor, can you even support your family? Are you gonna be some poor starving professor who's just in it for the love of it? Fortunately, we can look into this. The American Economic Association conducts an annual survey of salaries for economics professors. If you go to an institution where the highest economics degree is a PhD, the average salary for a new professor is $126,000. 
$1,000. And if you go to a university whose highest degree is a bachelor's, they don't offer any sort of graduate economics degree. Average salary for a starting professor is $86,000. Now let me give you a caveat here. I have been at two institutions, neither of which offers economics PhDs, and my salary is definitely above that $126,000 average at both institutions. I'm kind of a big deal. I've actually done a whole video on professors' salaries, including economics professors, and comparing them to other departments at colleges. You can go ahead and check that out here. But the moral of the story there is, yeah, you can definitely support your family with an economics PhD if you become a professor. So now let's get to the question of, do you want to become a professor? So let's understand what a professor is. A lot of students in economics enjoy their professors. In talking to a lot of undergraduates, it seems like a good economics professor has made a big impact on their love for economics. And I think a lot of students want to be that same figure in somebody else's life. So they think, I'm gonna become an economics professor, I'm gonna teach, and I'm gonna inspire the next generation. And I love that motivation. I definitely feel that motivation myself. But you should understand that professors main job isn't even teaching. At least at most universities, your job of teaching is kind of the side thing that you're supposed to be doing, while your main thing is research. Now, a lot of schools will say, no, 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 we care most about our students and teaching, but for promotion, for being retained at a school, if you want to continue to progress in your career, it's the research that makes the biggest difference. The teaching doesn't have that big of an impact. I look at it like your career and your family, that work-life balance. I personally think the most important thing that you can do is take care of your family. To be a good parent is way more important than if you're just a good employee. But to progress in your career and to have status in society, people see what your career is and they can't see who you are as a family person, which is why you have so many successful people who are actually terrible family people because they devote so many of their resources to becoming a good employee. You have a similar thing. I'm sure you've had many professors where you think, this professor is not a very good teacher. They're monotone, they're not interesting, they're belligerent. Well, the reason why they stay as a professor usually is that they've got a strong research portfolio. They're doing things that the school values for research, and that raises not only the professor's status, it raises the school status. Nobody gets to see what a class at Harvard or Yale looks like. That's not what people care about in the news when they're talking about these schools. They care about whether these professors are publishing research, which is why you always see Harvard study finds this, Yale researchers find that. You don't see Harvard teachers inspire students. Yale teachers bring us the next generation. It's always focused on the research because that's where status and prestige come from. So if you want to become a professor, you need to realize that your main job is going to be doing research, which is fine. Research is a ton of fun. Research is exciting. Publishing research, sometimes not as exciting. So if you enjoy doing research, if you want to be immersed in economics research going forward, become a professor. It's a great job, but the first thing you should know is that it's about researching and teaching is kind of a side gig. But there are definitely benefits to being a professor, not just through research and teaching. You have a lot of flexibility. I remember when I was an undergraduate, one of the most inspiring moments was a day where I had been working with a professor. That morning we meet and we talk about some things I needed to do. I did them during the day and I sent him an email. I see him in the evening and I say, hey, did you get my email about the task I did that I finished that? And he responded, no, but I set the high score on the basketball game at the arcade. Yeah, he had taken the afternoon off to spend time with his kids. He had a few hours where he, no one cared where he was. He didn't have to teach. He didn't have to be in the office. So he said, kids, we're going to the arcade and we're just gonna hang out today. And I think that is so cool. I find that so many times. There are times when I've called up professors to talk with them to figure some things out and say, hey, sorry, I'm on my way to my kid's baseball practice. Let's talk right now. That is so cool that as a professor, you have that flexibility to go and do those things. You don't get that flexibility in a lot of other jobs, but a lot of other jobs that you get, 
they're great too. They just have different requirements. So there's these trade-offs that you have to look at, but that's definitely one of the best things of being a professor is that you have a lot of flexibility in your job and a lot of autonomy on what you do. What if you want to become a professor right now and then you get into graduate school and you realize, you know what? I don't like research. I don't want to be a professor. Are you stuck? Are you just going to be in a miserable position? No, the nice thing about economics is that there are tons of jobs available for economics PhDs who decide they don't wanna be in academia. On that same side, I just showed you job openings for economists. There were 268 listings for non-academic jobs. And this is definitely a lower bound estimate of how many jobs are available for economics PhDs. One, not a lot of people know that you can post your job here. This is mostly for academic jobs. Other people will post it on regular sites like Indeed or whatever other site people are hiring on. They post it on their own website. They don't go here, but then you go and apply for those jobs. So an example is there was a time where I thought I wasn't going to be able to get a job as a professor. There were a few things going on. My options were running out. And then I emailed a company in California. They didn't even have a job opening listed. I just emailed somebody there and I said, Hey, I'm interested in getting out there. I'm just finishing up my PhD in economics. Are you looking for an economist? And they started the interview process. They said, hey, here are some groups that you might be able to work with. They were really interested in the fact that an economics PhD reached out to them and they were interested in pursuing that even though they hadn't listed a job. So there are tons of options if you get an economics PhD, both if you want to become a professor and also if you decide you don't want to become a professor, there is a way out. If you are interested in going to graduate school, I've done a video on my tips for applying to graduate schools. And also I hope you subscribe because this channel is about improving yourself as an economist and also just learning interesting things about economics. We'll see you next time on Market Power.